The Sand Trap by Nick and Finn. Bradley Bartleby was bad. He'd been born bad. Before ba baby Bradley even left the hospital, he'd bitten the midwife on the bottom, stolen the doctor's stethoscope, and emptied his handbag into it. And the older Bradley got, the badder he became. Bradley's parents were immensely rich. They had a huge house with a garden that was big enough to lose an elephant in. They knew that the garden was big enough to lose an elephant in because they'd done exactly that. Bradley had de um, demanded the elephant as a house pet, but treated it so badly it escaped into the garden and was never seen again. Bradley's parents always gave whatever he demanded, not because they thought he deserved it, because, but because they were terrified. Every Christmas, Mr. Bartelby hired a team of secretaries to type up a huge list of presents that his greedy son demanded for San from Santa Claus. Of course, Santa knew what a, bra what a beastly brat Bradley was, so he never looked at the list. But that didn't mean he, he forgot Bradley about Bradley completely. Santa's such a kind-hearted old fellow and that he believes no child, even one as bad as Bradley, should go without a present. So every Christmas morning, Bradley would discover that Santa had left him a small, the same small gift. Socks! Owled Bradley. Another pair of stupid socks! Never mind, dear! Cried Mr. and Mrs. Bartelby as they were rushed in the in with the trolley load of presents. Look, Mommy and Daddy have gotten you everything you wanted. But I don't want presents from you, roared Bradley. I want presents from Santa Claus like everyone else. The next morning, Mr. and Mrs. Bar Bartelby were alarmed to discover that their ch son had climbed up inside the living room chimney. They were even more alarmed that to discover that Bradley had nailed several sticks of dynamite around the chimney walls. Whatever, what are you doing, dear? asked Mrs. Bartelby nervously. What does it look like I'm doing? scowled Bradley. I'm building a trap! A trap, said Mr. Bartelby. A trap for what? For Santa Claus, snarled Bradley. I'm gonna catch that fat fool and take every prison he's got. Mr. and Mrs. Bartelby were speechless. In a lifetime of badness, this was quite the baddest thing that Bradley ever tried to do. Mr. Bartelby was the first to come in to his senses. Isn't it a little bit early to be setting up a trap? He gasped. It will take a whole year until Santa Claus comes again. Oh, this is this is the only the beginning, scoffed Bradley. It will take a whole year to finish it. And he was right. Bradley spent the rest of the winter fixing all the dynamite inside the other chimneys. And in the spring, training the tigers, which he stole from the local zoo. He spent the summer fitting gulletins all over the doors and windows. And in the autumn, cutting trap doors into all the floors. By, by the time December came around again, Bradley had turned the entire house into one stupendous... Santa Trap! By, by Christmas Eve, their home was so dangerous that Mr. and Mrs. Bartelby had moved out, of, out into a hotel, leaving Bradley alone in the house. One last thing, said Bradley as he hung his stocking beside the bed, the fireplace. He was certain that Santa would not make it that far, but just to make sure, he tied an invisible type wire, trip wire to the stocking. The mo the moment the moment that anyone no more stupid socks thought Bradley this m Christmas I'll get exactly what I want this Christmas I'll get a whole lot but but as the evening grew darker Bradley's eyelids grew heavier his evil efforts have left let left him quite exhausted and he soon fell fast asleep. It was almost midnight when Bradley was awakening, but was awakened by the roar of an angry tiger, whose tail had just been stepped on by an elephant. The house had grown, grown chilly, and when he looked outside, 
Bradley was surprised to find the garden covered with the shivering with cold, Bradley decided to light a fire. It was only when the flames began lit to lick up the chimney that Bradley remembered the dynamite. Oh, yeah! The explosion blew Bradley right out of the living room window and and out into the road. Bradley, Bradley struggled, struggled free of the thorny stems. He barely caught his breath when six sleek, stripy shapes came bounding toward him out of the snow. Nice kitties, squealed Bradley as he fled back through the rose bushes with the tiger snapping at his heels. The tigers chased Bradley around the garden twice before he was able to lose them by diving into a heap of fresh elephant dung and creep back into the house. Determined not to get, be caught in any more of his own traps, Bradley took a deep breath and prepared himself before opening the front door. Sometime later, as the sun rose on Christmas morning, a scratch scraped and badly bruised. Bradley limped back to the living room. There wasn't much of a fireplace left, but amazingly, his his stocking was still hanging up. And and even more amazingly, Bradley could see that there was more. There was something inside. Bradley hobbled. Plane. The metal cage dropped right over him. Bradley let out a long sigh. He knew that he was beaten, so he slumped down inside the cage and emptied his his stocking on the floor. For the first time ever, Santa had left Bradley more than one present. There was a big box of bandages and a large jar of anti-espic and, and a nice new pair of socks.